further ado, I will introduce our first um, speaker, um, which is engineer Herbert Azuela from uh, the University of Bahrain. He is an experienced lecturer with a demonstrated history of working in the education industry. He is skilled in computer networks, IoT, Windows Server, Mechatronics, Robotics, Research, and Programmable Logic Controller. He is a strong education professional with a Master's of Science in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. He's also a certified Cisco Networking Academy instructor trainer for CCNA routing and switching, IoT, and CyberOps with experience in managing Cisco Academic Support Center, Cisco Instructor Training Center, and Cisco Local Academy. His uh, session is entitled IoT-Based Access Control with Two-Factor Authentication Using RFID and Facial Recognition. Um, so, um, uh, Herbert, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Mr. Christos. Um, let me share my screen and uh, to everyone attending, good morning. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Christo, can you confirm if uh, the screen can be seen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Okay, so again, good morning. So my my, my presentation is about um, a use case scenario that uh, we have uh, um, implemented or created or developed uh, with uh, our students in the um, um, College of Applied Studies. So it's about an IoT-based access control um, system uh, that is... Um, um, using two-factor authentication, okay? Uh, two-factor authentication, meaning an added layer of security wherein we use RFID and uh, facial recognition. Okay. So, so these are the uh, contents of my uh, presentation. So first I'll start with the abstract, then followed by the objectives, methodology, uh, then uh, a video demonstration, um, key findings and uh, future recommendations for this particular um, research project. So let's start with the uh, important thing, physical security. So physical security is as important as data security because if this particular uh, uh, security is breached, it's actually very difficult to retrieve data. What kind of physical security attacks that we usually uh, um, see, no? theft, vandalism. So these are the common types of physical security um, attacks that when it happens, it's very difficult to retrieve. Uh, although the data might not be misused because it was stolen or something, a physical device was stolen, but it's it's a difficult uh, um, scenario wherein you have to retrieve those data uh, if it's already gone. No? So we decided to develop an access control mechanism that will be used uh, to, to, to authorize access to this kind of uh, restricted uh, um, um, places. Okay. So the access control must include authorization, access approval, multiple identity verifications, authentication, and audit. Okay. So this particular project will be addressing the design, construction, and implementation of this IoT-based access control system using the 2FA or two-factor authentication, RFID or radio frequency ID cards, and facial recognition. So again, 2FA is uh, an added extra layer of security uh, in which we are combining um, two types of um, information. So th the ID card is something that the person has, while the facial recognition is a biometric um, um, information that tells the, stu the, the, the person who she really is or he or she is. Okay. So our objectives is to develop a self-built um, access control system that is less expensive than professional installation. Um, implement a secured access control with two-factor authentication using um, RFID and facial recognition and build an actual prototype that will be used for implementation. Okay. So these are the hardware components that we have used. No? So Raspberry Pi is considered to be a, a very popular single board computer, very cheap. Um, and we use the Pi 3 B plus version. Okay. So it's a single board computer. Then we have a Microsoft Lifecom uh, HD camera 
linear actuator motor that will be used for the opening of the door uh, uh, mechanism, a touchscreen 7 inch LCD display that will be the interface to the user or to the uh, person trying to gain access to the, to, the, to the room or the place. Then we have RFID readers and cards, a relay module and a miniature model of a sliding door. Now, when it comes to software apps and online services, the, the, the main operating system that we use here is the Windows uh, IoT Core, Windows 10 IoT Core. So this is a uh, specially developed operating system that will run in a Raspberry Pi or a single board computer um, hardware, okay? And when it comes to the cognitive services, so the AI uh, uh, features of the uh, project, we use the Microsoft Azure um, cognitive services. Particularly, we have the Face API <clears throat> that uh, detects and identify people and emotions and images. Um, also, we use the text-to-speech API, wherein it converts text uh, to a real uh, speech that is more natural uh, and, and can be changed easily, you know, depending on uh, how you, you, you want it to be customized. And then we use the Microsoft Visual Studio for the uh, program programming. Okay. Now, so the AI features. So when uh, we use the Microsoft uh, Cognitive Services, so this is a comprehensive family of AI services, and Cognitive AP is uh, allow you to build intelligent apps. Okay, uh, without um, um, too much background in uh, artificial intelligence, uh, you can deploy it easily. So particularly in this uh, research project, we use the Face API or the face, which delivers low friction state of the artificial recognition, plus the text-to-speech uh, feature that allows apps to live with natural sounding voices. Okay, so that's the, uh, the core of the software operations of this particular project. So you can see here the schematic diagram. So this is the RFID uh, reader. So we used here a, a passive uh, RFID cards. Okay, so typically short range. Okay, so this is very common, like a, a normal staff ID or student ID card. No? Then it is interfaced to the single board computer, the Raspberry Pi, which is connected to a seven inch LCD that allows us to interact with the system via touch screen. We also have the HD uh, live cam connected via USB and a uh, two channel relay that will control, control the movements of the um, 12 volts um, linear actuator motor here and the speaker that will provide the voice prompt or the voice message uh, when it comes to granting access or deny access uh, on, on the um, um, access control. Okay. okay. So I have here a operational overview. So actually I have a full flow chart, but it, it, it will be complicated to um, um, uh, describe and explain here. So I will just have the operational overview of the uh, implementation of the project. No? So the first part will be the scanning of a valid RFID card. So assuming that um, that particular user was already registered, so he has a valid RFID card and her face or his face is already on the database. Okay. So if this happens, then uh, it will move to the next step. Or it's a new user, so probably a new employee or you want grant access to a new uh, person. So it has to be scanned with an RFID and a matching face okay, to make sure the RFID matches with the face that will be captured. So let's say we have a, a valid RFID card. Okay, So this will trigger the camera to open. So this is the first authentication. Okay, So uh, that's why we call it two-factor authentication. We know that two-factor authentication now is a very popular uh, um, security mechanism. We, we, we've seen it from Google. We've seen it from Apple. So it's not only your username and password. They want you to verify further uh, your uh, and, uh, identity. No? Even banks uh, does that. No? Remember the OTP, the one-time pin generation? Aside from the password, you have to put those particular types of authentication. So here, let's say you have a, a valid RFID card. So it will open the camera and capture the user's face. Okay. Then after that, it will check the database for a matching, matching RFID card with a face detected. Then the last step will be grant or deny access by opening the door and played a personalized audio message. So um, once you are granted access, it will personalize the uh, audio message by saying your name based on the registered information. 
Uh, and the same thing, if you are denied, so uh, a voice prompt or an audio message will also be played that you are not allowed to enter or, the, or go inside the premises. Okay, so this is the uh, very uh, short operational overview of the um, system. Okay. So this is the application interface. You can see here the uh, Windows IoT Core operating system. So it's not a typical Windows interface that you will see. Okay, and this is the actual um, application interface wherein uh, once you scan the valid RFID card, it will uh, capture um, um, the photo and uh, start the matching process uh, via the Azure uh, Cognitive Services through the cloud. Okay. So let me show you a, a brief uh, video demonstration. Okay. So let's start first with the new user registration. So first we'll register the face. Admin control enabled. Registration process. Okay, so that's the uh, registration process in which um, a new face will be scanned with the matching RFID cards. So RFID has its own unique uh, identifier number that will be inputted together with the name. Okay. Now on the next video, we will see uh, the access testing of that newly registered user. We will show uh, if it will recognize Fatima's face. Welcome to the yes. facial recognition door, Fatima. Then the door opens. Let me uh, move it forward a bit. After a few seconds, it automatically closes. Let me move that forward a bit and yes. So that is the actual implementation. As you can see, uh, you saw the process of registration and that same uh, uh, phase was tested if it can be granted access uh, by the system. We will show Oops, sorry. Uh, if we can uh, the next. Uh, uh, slide. So here, here are the key findings that uh, um, we uh, actually uh, um, seen while uh, testing the um, implemented um, system. So there's an increased accuracy of face detection uh, uh, if you are in a well lit room compared to a low light environment. So probably that that's that's a factor in in, in the detecting of the face. And second, we have an increased accuracy of successful access the moment more face samples are collected from the same authorized user. So as you, as you go along, uh, you use the system many times and many samples of your face are being captured by the system. It increased the accuracy of detecting the face that is matching with an RFID card. So yes, because uh, we know uh, uh, when it comes to uh, um, AI and machine learning, so the more samples or data you have, the more accurate the prediction will be. So in here, it happens the moment we added more samples of the same face, uh, the accuracy of detection, even actually the low light uh, uh, um, constraint were actually resolved by, by this particular um, 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 samples that are being inputted to the system. And of course, since it's an IoT based system, so it relies to internet connection. 
So it depends on the internet speed and stable connection. So it has a direct influence on the response of the cognitive services. So we tested two types of internet connection here, uh, a wired connection and a wireless connection. Um, and of course, uh, the wired pair better with the wireless um, connections. And even we tried the uh, connecting it into a, um, a personal Wi-Fi that is using a cellular connection. Um, if it is LTE, then the, 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 the result is actually, or the stability of the connection is actually good. And this is the, 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 the most important thing. The two-factor authentication access were observed with all the samples um, tested. Okay, now for future recommendations, no? So, of course, we want to have uh, more tests using large number of users and face samples. Uh, because even the API is actually improving with its version. So now it can detect now um, emotions and other uh, things, although it's not a factor yet with our uh, research project, but having more tests using large number of users and face samples will, I think, probably enhance and uh, make the accuracy much more better. Uh, also increase the speed of the uh, door mechanism by using an alternative actuator, probably uh, a better linear actuator or a motor or pneumatic system uh, that can be uh, easily incorporated and uh, cheaper as well, because we have to, 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 to stick to that particular objective that it is a cheaper alternative. And adding additional sensors for user safety, like probably an infrared sensor, similar to what you see in elevators, that if a person is still on the door, it will not close uh, um, immediately. And replacing a full HD or uh, probably a 4K uh, camera for high resolution face capture. And this is the one that we are exploring right now. So the possibility of using near field communication to replace RFID. Uh, near field communications are found on uh, newest models of mobile phones. Uh, it's now being used as a uh, pay on the go system or wireless payment mechanisms uh, for other, uh, um, um, I think, um, shops that are using that particular type of thing and even transfer of data, okay? So near field com communication. Okay, so that's it for my presentation. And thank you for uh, listening in. Yeah, Mr. Christos. Thank you, Herbert. That was really nice and very interesting indeed. Um, uh, I think it's time for questions. So if someone sure. from the audience would like to uh, ask some questions, then please type them in the Q&A. Uh, uh, Herbert. Can I ask, is this a project done solely by faculty or did students also? No, it, 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 it's a collaboration between students and the faculty. So um, because it, um, we, we did it as a collaborative effort since the students, uh, I, I'll be the, I'll, I'm, I was the main supervisor of the, the project. Uh, the idea came from me. So we, we discuss it with the student and see if right. we can uh, um, create a solution for this kind of problem. Uh, using IOT. Uh, we, actually, these are dip, dip students, so two years uh, diploma student. And uh, they, they took the challenge and we, we did, we, we, we did our, all our research and yes, uh, it was successful at that time. And they were actually uh, awarded with a, um, a successful uh, project presentation. <clears throat> this is really nice. It's so nice to see students engaging in such uh, type of projects. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, AI is actually fairly new to them, but um, they took the challenge <clears throat> and with proper guidance and <clears throat> all the uh, support that they, they got from the college and from the faculties, um, it was a, a success. Okay, uh, now we have one question from Mohamed al Um Have you tested using a physical photo for face recognition? Um, yes, we, we tested some uh, uh, physical photos that were uh, taken from an outside uh, entity. Um, but the, the problem is that since it's a real-time um, 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 scenario, we tested the, the, the mechanisms of the facial recognition. But when it comes to actual uh, storing of database, it has to be done through the cloud. So the system will be the one taking the photo. Okay. But the, the API for facial recognition using uh, uh, standalone uh, and it works using other photos, like um, previously uh, created photos. The facial features are there, wearing uh, eyeglasses or having a mustache or something. Okay. It, it, it was accurate at some point, 
uh, but in, in the system, since it is uh, connected to the internet, so the actual capturing of data to be integrated to the system must be done, must be done uh, uh, online because the database is connected to the Azure uh, services. How would the system respond if somebody puts a, a physical photo in front of the camera trying to cheat it? <laughs> How would this? this uh, yeah. Is a... <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting uh, uh, thing. Okay. So that's why first, uh, an, a valid RFID uh, will be uh, um, checked yeah. before the camera triggers. And we, we actually, to be honest, we haven't tested a, uh, a photograph of, of something. Um, or I, I think we have tested a an, an student ID uh, with the same person, a normal student ID. And uh, at that point, it was denied access. Okay. And then we didn't test it further for that particular aspect. Yeah, but that's, that's a very good point because it will create false uh, positives in, in which uh, you are uh, not putting a real person in front of the access door. That's true. Yeah. Um, do we have any more? We don't have any more questions yet. Like, can I ask myself, um, are you considering other modalities such as voice recognitions or uh, something else? Uh, uh, actually, uh, yes, uh, we, I, I'm working on a uh, current research idea right now. Uh, now we are in the pandemic. Uh, we do virtual classes. I do virtual classes uh, through Blackboard, uh, although uh, cameras are not uh, uh, fully open for everyone. Okay. But um, I guess uh, um, the, the, the solution that I'm, we're trying to, to do is uh, how can we predict student um, behavior or interaction using the videos that we can see. So meaning uh, we will create an AI system wherein we can see based on the facial uh, uh, reactions or uh, pause or um, um, uh, behavior of the student, we can see, are they happy? Are they sad? Do they have problems? So uh, uh, I, I bought a, a certain device. I, I, know, I don't know if you have heard about it. This is the N Intel NCS Compute Stick. So because uh, having this in a Raspberry Pi will be difficult to run a complicated algorithm. So um, I found out that I can have this particular GPU, uh, a USB stick that can enhance the uh, um, um, running of these algorithms. So we are on that particular aspect right now. So can, can we use captured videos, even in YouTube or something, uh, recorded videos of students and, and predict their behavior in terms of how they interact in the class? So that, that's one thing that we are trying to uh, work on right now. And one, uh, I have another one, facial uh, uh, detection with face mask, you know. So it's another <laughs> student project. Uh, very good accuracy, around 70-80%. Uh, but yeah, there's still some lacking features. We, we want to add a thermal camera that can detect temperature as well. So it was successful. It was done last uh, semester. And, uh, and yes, it uses TensorFlow Lite that can run in a um, single board computer. Okay. Very good. These are exciting ideas. Um, we have another question from the audience. Do you have students studying AI and have they developed any bot using Microsoft services? Okay. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Actually, the program that we have in the applied studies is network administration and cybersecurity operations. So these are fully aligned with the Cisco Networking Academy. So for those who are familiar with the Networking Academy, this is a very big um, 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 organization that handles uh, networking professionals or networking students. So they, we have an IoT, but we don't have yet a dedicated AI course for it, okay? But you know, AI is actually can be, can be named as AIoT because AI device, our IoT devices actually generates a lot of data, okay? So um, we have it as, as, as a part of it, and of course, we have the uh, project implementation. When it comes to robotics, um, we've done some robotic uh, project, like uh, a robotic project that will be used to inspect uh, oil pipes without human intervention. So it's connected by IoT, but it's not yet integrated with the uh, IoT services. But that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good um, idea to explore in the future. Um, Herbert, do you feel that in the future, everything will have a sensor, as the IoT says? Yes, actually, I, I, I believe in that, because this particular sensor is, is 
actually our interface to the to the, to the machine, right? As humans, we have our own senses that makes us operate. So having this kind of things, probably in the near future, yes, we're going to have it. We've seen it in being implemented in farms, in oil uh, oil industry, in gas industry, uh, even in cars. You know, self-driving cars. Okay. So although it's not hundred percent yet a reality, but I think sooner or later this will be a possibility. Can you imagine how much data we will be collecting? Yeah. With all yeah. This? Yes, it's, it's really, uh, and you know, the data comes with the territory and the time, you know? So uh, I, I watched a certain documentary before that during the uh, New Year's Eve, a certain surge of data happens. So meaning during that time, there are a lot of things going on. So that's only a uh, human interaction. So what, what if you are having other data coming from machines that are, that are feeding data in and out? Uh, yeah, and uh, actually the other uh, things that we have to consider now is IoT security. <laughs> because these this particular devices are usually deployed remotely, difficult to upgrade, difficult to monitor. So making them secure, it will be a challenge. This is great. Thank you very much for the insight, Herbert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Um, are we... We don't have any more questions from the audience, so I think we can conclude here. Thank you, thank uh, you, thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> thanks again, and look forward to talk to you again about the exciting projects that you are working with your students, and to find out that everything has been progressing and there are new tools developed here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.